I'm recording already. Well, Javi. Well, hearey, hearey, hearey. Somebody's finally here. You heard Have the dog speech. barking? Oh, you guys, uh... Been waiting for this guy? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big day. Get out. I'll pull you. Well, <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> We're gonna start uh some music right now, really quick, to get in the mood. All right, and this is the only thing that's gonna be, I guess, mood or you know you're familiar with uh, right now. So we're gonna start the tunes, and then we'll kick. As you can see, uh, you know, we came prepared like beauties, and Javi seems to be struggling a little bit already. But let's kick it back to the intro, and we'll get this party started, bad boys. <laughs> Everybody, it is beans and rice. It's your boy Hoss. It's your boy Hobby. And it's Hoss Beefy right here. Well, if you guys can see me, I'm over here hiding in the corners. So if you could tell that we have kind of a little bit of a mix up, it is it's time for Hobby's <laughs> annual review, basically. <laughs> but before we even get into that, I believe I'm gonna have to adjust my myself a little bit here. Host Beefy, what are the holidays? Host Beefy, we got a couple of holidays. The first holiday, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, in the stars in the heavens. Some people call it Star Wars. And that is the national day today, Star Wars Day. It is May 4th. May the 4th be with you all. It just sounds like Mike Tyson trying to trying to say it all. Trying to be Catholic? Trying to be <laughs> <laughs> May the 4th be with you. There's a little cross, kisses his hands, moves on with his day. What have, you got to say about uh, Star Wars, Javi? I was about to say, have you even seen Star Wars? I've seen it once. Once? It's, uh, the monologue was okay. Mm, that's it. The monologue was okay. That's all you have to say about Star Wars? Yeah. A right. beloved franchise, one of the biggest franchises of all time? Uh, I feel like it's a ripoff of Catholicism, but... <laughs> You know, a that's just my Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, their main goal is to preach a religion. For They're sure. getting real progressive with uh, Catholicism now. You know, now yeah, they're this is that submersive. So who does, submersive way to get who, the young people to turn to Catholicism? Who does Darth Vader represent in Catholicism? The opposer. Jesus. Who? The opposer. The opposer that turns back to yes, the sir. to the good side. That would probably be the other guy. What's the name of the guy with the spikes? Darth Brooks or whatever. Darth Maul. Garth Brooks. I'm sure it's his name. Darth Maul. Oh, I would probably say that's Satan. I would say Darth Vader's more like Jesus, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. He yeah. he took upon everyone's sins. Well, wasn't he the god because he saved his only begotten? Yeah, he was the demigod, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. I mean, Vader would be Jesus, right? Because he took upon the sins of everyone, and then he, he died. He self-sacrificed? Yeah, so that everybody else could live on. I mean, shout out, to Pop, out there. <laughs> shout out to Papa Vader. Okay, that's all. That's all you have on Star Wars. That's great. Yeah, that's I'm, really it. Mm. I mean, clearly, they're we're not big as Star Wars fans here, <laughs> other than I guess myself. What's the next holiday we have going on, Hosbuki? Well, things are going great so far. The next thing we're celebrating today, May Fourth, are birds. <laughs> It's also <laughs> National <laughs> Birthday, baby. YMCMB. Shout out to Birdman. Birdman Junior. He flies in any weather. Go. Cool. Yeah. Javi, you're nervous. Why? I'm not nervous. I'm just you don't not support, the, you don't I'm not support the, the avian community. <laughs> not after this uh, pandemic and the previous ones. Well, that so, was the bird flu. Yeah, the bird flu wasn't even a big deal. Wasn't and it? We still got a lot of penguins around. Pelicans are still around. Yeah, flamingos. There's seagulls. Peregrine falcons. Yeah, there's seagulls. Remember we talked about this. There's seagulls, and the Great Salt Lake is extinct, basically. Yeah. And there's seagulls here. There's uh, magpies. You got ostriches. What else you got? Oh, you got uh, kiwis. Emus. Emus. 
Now you got the Mitsubishi Evos too. Those ones. <laughs> you got the uh, what you else got you got? Eagles, out there? owls, hawks. Oh yeah, hawks, dude. dude all kinds of birds. Vultures. They got condors, dude. Chickens. Oh, the, the most consumed ones. meat yep. <laughs> in the U.S. and I believe Canada. Swans, geese. Take your pick. Swanton bombs, dude. Huh? You ever seen a couple swans commit suicide in mid-flight? Swanton bomb, dude. Seen you've seen two coots flying and hitting each other in the air. I'm not talking about lesbian scissoring while they're skydiving. I'm talking about coots. <laughs> yep, you see those birds try to take down the Utah Jazz, huh? <laughs> Try to take down the plane, a couple kamikaze Dude, birds. I think that was the New Orleans Pelicans sending out oh, their yeah. birds just trying to <laughs> take out the Jazz. Um, so yeah, birds. Uh, one time, I remember remember one of our first episodes, uh, I told you I almost ran, when we were talking about omens, I told you uh, I almost ran over a bird, remember? And I barely missed. Yeah, and I talked about literally running over a bird. I, I felt it hit the bumper of my car, and I got out, and there were like feathers and some blood on my bumper. But I couldn't find like the duck anywhere. I, I looked for probably a solid 50 yards back and forth on the street, but couldn't find the body. <laughs> it what, disappeared like Harry Potter. What's special uh, in birds to you, Javi? I see uh, what's the most special bird to you. Or what You don't have any stories about birds or anything like that? No, I, I, I like doves because they look clean, you know. They look clean, but they they're basically clean. a pigeon that showers. Yeah, so that, that's about it. They're the... Uh, <laughs> They're the okay. white supremacists of the avian species. Yep. All white. Says a lot, you know? Yeah. They keep your body clean. Your hair. They give you olive uh, tree branches. Olive branches. Catholicism. I clearly yep. you don't read the Bible. Yeah. Um, yep. Definitely not the King James Version. <laughs> I don't know which one he's reading, dude. Yeah, he's like, I read the Hamas Version. Let's see. So, well, let's get to another holiday. Mo- like, I spread a hummus <laughs> on my bread and pita. Let's see, there's another uh, holiday here that maybe Hobby wants to celebrate. So far, he looks like he's not, uh, he's not very doing celibate. Any of it's just this you know? uh, old age of he mine. He doesn't seem very <laughs> celibate Do we today. think it's the seating arrangement that we have that's set I'm up? I'm telling you, I'm not telling it. No. <laughs> that's why I stay well, sure. I stay we, my ass how, behind the camera. How long did we give him the, to prepare? What did we say? He wanted you to come in tip-top shape. I want you to do push-ups. I want you to work on your core cardio. I want you to do yoga, mindful exercises. So breathing techniques, you, all the above. Expect the unexpected. And then next we have uh foster, all the foster care, foster care, national foster care day for all those people that are taking care of other kids. And uh what do you have about foster's home for imaginary friends? One of the most famous uh foster houses in the United States of America. It's well known everywhere in the world. They've made numerous TV shows about it. Uh so foster's uh home for imaginary friends. What do you have to say about uh, that beautiful place, Us? Really, I mean, I don't really care about that place. I, what I really enjoy is Foster the People, that band. Special place in my heart. I don't even know a single song, but they're special. Foster the People. So you should be fostering people's hearts, people's minds, people's souls. Take care of people. Especially little children that don't have parents. Orphans. Except for Stuart Little. Yeah, that's uh, more on that later, because... <laughs> I don't know if we can count him as like a legit, but I mean, he does talk, so it's pretty hard. Like, imagine you if you were not, yeah, count him in. The- imagine going <laughs> to like hunt. I hunt. You guys don't, but maybe you should get into it. And like, if you shot and the animal was just like talking back to you, it'd probably be harder to kill it. You know what I mean? It would be weird. Yeah. Like, hey, please don't shoot. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, I got you dead I'm- to right. <laughs> Boom. I paid too much for this hunting <laughs> license. <laughs> And then the next thing you know, you're feeding the village in Africa. Very nice. But you also eliminated a speaking animal. Like, what's... Probably a miracle, really. You think it would be a miracle? Um, I mean, if it's the one, yeah. If would, I, I assume his whole colony of species also speaks human. But, I don't know. Speaks human, huh? I've never heard that language. Or... I would hope it includes all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they just can speak any language. Yeah, any language. That'd be pretty know? impressive. Yeah, you wouldn't have you couldn't like your kill dog, an animal like, that did that. Or like Poncho that only speaks Spanish. Yeah. You know? No, you couldn't kill an animal if it spoke every language. Maybe one or two or three, maybe. But all of them, no, that's too sacred. That would be crazy. Yeah. But I mean, is that it for our, our holidays? Our we boys got giving one us more. Nothing. Okay. Uh, this one that 
we've been trying to do for it feels like i don't know nearly a year uh we've been trying to uh, groom somebody you know what i mean they say oh you pick somebody that's young well we didn't pick him up i guess too young but we picked javi up and it's a national teacher's day so shout out to mr uh mcgregor uh the freaking lone wolf out there maybe he's still teaching a uh, shout out to my favorite teacher mr miller uh mr campbell he was like 800 years old he he basically invented math that's how old he was so mr campbell he dressed like a cowboy but what about uh your your guys's teaching uh experiences Bobby, you go first um i want to give a shout out to mr and mrs sundell they're both pretty cool to me r.i.p me yeah r.i.p mr sundell and i don't know about mrs or miss well, she's still like she's a widow now so it's widow it, sundell yes Have widow sundell respect yeah shout out to her um mr johnson he always made class fun even as a substitute so <laughs> substitute huh yeah okay and speaking about substitutes hobby today is the on-call <laughs> substitute temp worker you know <laughs> Just in case our our other temp workers haven't been showing up, so you know, always on call. I've only been on call for a year, so. Well, bad news for you. I am a, a very specialized. I'm a sophisticated interrogator. I'm prepped here with my little notebook. I've got several questions to be asking you a little bit later. Um, but back to the uh, topic of teachers. I want to know. There's so many rappers. Like my teacher told me, I wasn't going to be shit. Who are these teachers? I I never met a teacher like that. Like they might think that, but I've never had a teacher come up to me. Maybe it's because I didn't think I spoke English. But yeah, you're right. I'll be sh fucking shit. You're a piece of shit. You're gonna end up dead or in jail. I want to find out who these teachers are and if um, they kept their job after. All yeah, that. like do you keep your job after telling a kid? Nowadays, you probably wouldn't. Um, but feel free to anonymously not anonymously send us an email. Send us an email. We will keep you anonymous. We'll have you on. We'll have some questions for you. Why are you telling kids they're not going to be shit? Uh, sometimes it might be warranted. Sometimes it may not be. Why are you basing it on if they're going to be shit or not? But I mean, that's a really good question I have for these teachers out there that are just talking smack to kids. Screw you guys. One thing that I, I think would have been cool if it was true was the... Uh... Do you guys remember the Biggie movie when he's like, oh, I just, they're, they tell him, are you going to drive a dump truck? And then Biggie's like, I just found out that a dump truck makes 15, 60 an hour and multiply it by that. He's like, he makes more money than your old bitch ass or something like that. And he says that to his teacher. Yeah. I wonder if that's real. Cause that would have been, you know, he's like, damn, that would have been, been, cool been an flex. ultimate burn. Yeah. Uh, you know? And what if you said it to a math teacher? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, he said it it the, probably was. Like, I have been paying attention. <laughs> uh, I figured it out. Uh, calculated your wage, you know what I mean? Dude, what if he did that? He walked into the chalkboard, you know what I mean? Because they didn't have whiteboards back then. So he walks up to the chalkboard and he's like, this is you. You make blah, blah, blah and starts breaking the salary. This is the dump truck driver that you said I would be. I'm going to be making more money than you. That's why he had a hefty voice. All that inhalation of chalk. Born sinner, the opposite of a winner. Like Remember when they used to eat sardines of, for dinner? Chuck. Yeah, his lungs were just like yeah. not at full capacity, <laughs> so he had the heavy voice. Yeah. It wasn't because he was big, <laughs> it's because he was inhaling a bunch of dust particles from chalk. From showing up teachers? And then that's why all these kids now are all, uh, kids, all these young age rappers are loving drugs, because now they got the marker boards, right? So they're opening up these markers and huffing them. They're little druggies from the get-go. We figured it out. You did. That's good. Well, it's, it was a collective job. unit. Yeah. That's how we went together. <laughs> Patent pending. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the only thing I've thought about was uh, when Biggie said that about a teacher, uh, one of my teachers uh, told me, if you guys remember, uh, Miss Hall, you know, she, she would always kick me out of uh, everything. I couldn't even go to field day. And Miss Hall Miss, told me. Is this elementary? Elementary in sixth oh, grade. Yeah. Miss Hall weird. told me, she's like, Jose, and this is, mind you, this is after she kicked me out of field day. So I couldn't even do participate. I had to sit there. Like, how miserable. I understand if a kid's being a jerk, but how miserable you just leave the kid there the whole day. You know what I mean? And it's it's the last day you're even going to see the kid. So why not just let him enjoy himself, you know? But she once we get back to the classroom, she tells me, uh, Jose, I think you're going to grow up to be like Bill Cosby. And so far... No pills. Nope. I haven't drugged anybody. I haven't done anything without consent. On the contrary, 
He's had some people try to non-consensually do things to him. Yep, I am a victim. So maybe she should have said, you are going to be a Bill Cosby victim. Yeah. <laughs> that would have had more potential, you know? But so far, we proved that lady wrong. Miss Hall? Miss Hall? R.A.P.? Fuck you. Not you, Miss Hall. Yeah, screw Miss Hall. But uh, did you guys have any uh, bad teachers? What was your bad, your worst teacher like, Hoss? I had a chemistry teacher. I didn't like her hair at all. It looked she was always running really fast. It was like slicked back, but it was like lifted. Almost like Jesse from Pokemon. Um, so it looked like she was running fast, but she wasn't going anywhere. And she had a cleft lip. And all she did for the first five days in chemistry was talk about how hard chemistry was going to be. So I showed her and I dropped out. Worst teacher I ever had. You spent five days lecturing on how hard... Literally, she would just give these sermons on the mount. Chemistry is really hard. And blah, blah, blah. Like, it was her way of making herself feel better that she was smarter than everyone else. Lady, you went to college. You went to university. I'm of four. course. You yeah. got a master's degree. Of course you're smarter than us. You dumbass. You're teaching us. Is she, okay? though? Because the garbage man is still making more than Yeah, him, and so. we've talked about it before. I think we always think that the best teachers are the ones that understand kids and still have kind of like that childlike mentality because they just enjoy seeing kids learn they don't think like oh just because you're a kid and you have less time on this earth that you're less than me but she was the opposite of that and she was relatively young now have you guys noticed that some of the teachers that teach chemistry or electricity or one of those the sciences like you said they have that weird hair you know it's like all frizzy it's like kind of weird like yeah you know what i mean like you can't trust them like they kind of held on to a like a power line for too long, you know, and now they're teaching chemists because, you know, oh, they they had to go to, uh, they had to go as kids. Oh, they almost died. Now they have to learn about electricity, you know? So now they're like, that's the only, they have PTSD. So now they're like teaching you about their PTSD every single day. And that's why they're experts. Cause they, dude, you were shocked as a kid. Okay. You didn't get to in this well willingly. You yeah. Know? You stuck a spoon, which I don't know how you do. You stuck the fat end of a spoon in an outlet. And now you're teaching kids not to do that. Yeah, you filed a spoon so it would fit there, you freaking idiot, you know? Yeah. I don't know why you filed a spoon. You had a knife to begin with. What do you need to file a spoon yeah, for? just on that. Or a screwdriver. That works, too. Uh, um, what works wonders is just um, maybe a, a fork. Idea. Fork's the best one. Forks. If you're going to stick uh, any object in an outlet, just use a fork. Be an adult. Be a man. No, be an adult. We're being inclusive here. Nah, be a man. Okay, yeah, be a man. <laughs> wow, he's talking back already, Hoss? Yep. Can you see that? That's fine. He's trying to sway your opinion, but <laughs> other than, uh, the lastly, other than, uh, teachers, the other, the last thing that we are celebrating today is going to be National Hobby Review Day. You know, we give him a lot to... A lot of time. And it is oh. national. Yeah, and it he was saying, oh, I'm going to uh, prepare for it. May the 4th be with me. He was saying all these nerd things. And now he comes in here, oh, I never watched Star Wars. Never. Not once in my you life. Know? But then he takes selfies with the little baby Yoda. Look at my new throw pillow. First question, what's baby Yoda's real name, Javi? Man, uh, it's probably Mandalorian Jr. Wrong. Grogu. Yeah. Already failing. Okay. Mandalorian is a car anybody... from Back to the Future, you freaking nerd. You don't think anyone would have gotten that? Probably not. Well, if you watch season two of The Mandalorian, you should have gotten that. Unless... Oh, but you have this name plus. Okay. You're Unless you're Helen Kelling, you're right? deaf, but support you couldn't hear pedophiles. it. I don't support pedophiles. I don't have Disney plus. You have this name plus plus. You don't support pedophiles? Who's a pedophile? Disney. Walt Disney's a pedophile? Um, hearsay, yes. Hearsay? Yeah. I heard he's anti Semitic. I just didn't have never heard that he's a pedophile. Well,. Maybe not him, but people that work there. <laughs> you could say the same about almost every organization, I'm sure. True. Nike, Walmart. And I don't support them either. Yeah. <laughs> make my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, you make everything from I scratch. I make everything from scratch. Yeah, you made those uh, NMD look shoes. Yep. Looking shoes, okay. Yeah. He's Amish. I'm Amish. That's what the beard is for. I couldn't bleach it very well, so uh, I kept it in. The natural color. Well, the Amish don't believe in technology. You're right in front of a phone, so you're going to hell. Um, we'll go ahead and get C'est started. La vie. <laughs> C'est la vie. I'm pretty sure the Amish don't speak French either. 
So oh, aren't they French Amish? There's there's British Amish. Is there? Yeah. They're called Isn't that weird? Yeah. That is strange. I thought Amish was like strictly a US thing. Maybe. But it's like how does word get out? They don't talk to each other. They're not crossing the seven seas to spread the word of Amishism. But you don't think that's where they came from? You the UK? I Quakers and stuff, sure, but I don't know, I guess. Shout out um, to Quaker Oatmeal, but host is saying what well you're we finna get started with the review. Is that what's happening? Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with I the review. I can feel the I can feel it coming, coming in the air, air tonight. Love you, ghost. Hold on. I think I'm getting fired. Well, let's see. We're going to start with the uh, questions. And Javi, I hope... I, you know what, host? To be fair, I did send them reminders. Hey, you ready for your big day? Hey, you know, make sure to smile a lot. He hey, did. I can't confirm do your cool. mirror work. No hey, excuses then. Come in like a no doctor. Excuses. You know? I said, hey, Javi, get your 10 hours of sleep because you got concussed, so you need 10. So I, I try to give him walk the horse to the water. Now, did he drink? Or is he trying to drink now? Maybe it's a little too late, you know? Yeah. The, wa the water that I bestowed upon him, enriched with minerals and flavors and uh, knowledge that I bestowed, maybe he did not drink it, that thou. Thou didn't. So we shall see. That's why thou is drinking it now. What he does. So we're going to start off with a uh, host. Uh, and I hope you're taking this very serious, Javi. These uh, first three questions I have for you are completely gender neutral. They are for thou. So tell us how you have positively impacted this podcast. Positively? Yes. Say. Oh, you were prepared to talk about how negatively you've impacted it? Yeah. Okay, well, go with positive. Time management. I feel like the segments have been broken up pretty decently. These were all your ideas? Um, maybe not 100%. Maybe some I can't remember. My memory's a little off, but... Maybe the timing of it was. I'll leave it up to thou. Thank you. For your uh, non-specification of gender classification. Uh, what has been your biggest area of opportunity during your tenure? Biggest area of opportunity? Um, the inner office interactions. Um, finding a, a voice for on air. Which is like... Baby steps, you know? Well, baby steps with that water, because that's the only bottle you're going to get, buddy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this I is the we'll second from a nap. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> This is the second was, question, and he's almost done with the water, dude. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so you mentioned a little bit earlier time management, right? Can you tell us how you stay organized, and what are your methods for staying on top of your work? I take notes on the side as we uh, conversate. We always go live. One take, Jose and Jose, you know? Um... Is this a recent practice? Is this a practice that you have employed the entire year that you've been with us? Or not really an entire year, but you get it. It's pretty close to a year. Um, yes, it has been at least 75% of the time that I've been employed here. Interesting. So you'd say three quarters of the time. Three quarters of the you've time. You've been our moderator. You've taken notes separately, and we've never had to commune as a, a trio to discuss what we discussed on the, the topics. Yes. Okay. 60% of the time, I've taken notes all the time. Well, we went from 75 to 60. Who knows, you know? My 60 could be your 50, or Jose's 40. Mm -hmm. We all live our separate truths. That's fine. So that is the most formal portion of this entire interview. So... Are we going to elaborate at least on the professionalism portion of this part, or are we going to continue on? And I'm now speaking to a moderator, Jos, a beefy. Well, I think, you know, we were going to see this whole podcast, you know, one take. He said it's one take. You know, he they try to take our uh, test, our IQs. Oh, how deep can a host, host beef or host go? You know, how far they, can they go into the abyss and come back? You know, what can they do just off the top? So they're on the table. I have a couple off the top things for Javi. The first one you're going to grab is the flute and you're going to open it up. 
and that is a flute or some people may know it as a recorder okay this is a limited edition recorder it was actually <laughs> limited edition from and india <laughs> okay so you just uh, open it so uh moving the microphone a little bit away from you you need to play wait up you're going to play mary had a little lamb and we're going to see if you can play it okay one two Where's the high note? <laughs> no, <laughs> the last five notes were the same, but I will be impressed with the first two bars. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, the first two bars, I'm like, wow, I'm surprised you even got that far. High notes, I'm sorry. But, I mean, been, it's been the, only 20 years. The last five notes years. were the same. You forgot how to go that high on the flute, hobby? <laughs> I did. You only know how to go low, huh? Yeah. The only flute he's familiar with is the skin flute. Um, <laughs> that was not bad. That was not bad. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I was impressed. Next on the talent table. We have uh, <laughs> titties for short. The TT, where you're gonna grab the TT, you're gonna grab the beautiful harmonica. Okay, we have harmonica somewhere there. Also, limited edition, played by Willie Nelson in his last contest and his last concert before he died. R.I.P. Willie Nelson. R.I.P. to him. He really died. No. And he died. And uh, on this, for this one, Hose, I'm gonna let you do the honors to ask him what song you want to hear. What song you want him to hear perform, or uh, what lullaby? What you know? What tune maybe your your mom would sing to you when uh, she'd put you to bed or something like that? You know, we've talked about titties already with this uh, TT table. Let's hear Hot Cross Buns. I don't know if I've ever heard that. Bitch. Oh. Hey, we don't talk about women like that anymore in this podcast. I thought they were gender neutral now. Well, we don't Mitch. Talk, we don't. Right. Ho, man, ho. I don't know that song, if I'm being honest. Um, what's that one where you just roll your knuckles across the piano? <laughs> Inhale. <laughs> my lung capacity on the harmonica are you blowing it the right way i don't know if i know how to blow correctly well it came with the instructions so maybe if you look at the instructions <laughs> on how to use a harmonica I, okay you've been demeaning woman them. already for three minutes maybe you can uh maybe i can at least learn how to play blow. some wop on the harmonica dude I be conducive I'm being to honest, a welcoming environment so i hate that stallion song. What? Bra breaking instruments. <laughs> yeah, I know this is okay. Well, we're gonna move on from the harmonica. His lips are getting dry, palms are sweaty, knees weak because it's and, broke. You know, we're gonna go really quick just to put him in. Uh, we're gonna give you here uh, 15 seconds. The next thing on the talent table, word cross, there word is search. a word search, and you can just open it to the first, um, the first page, and you are going to get. Uh, 20 seconds. Give me one second. Don't be seconds. looking at it like that. Yeah, the fans don't want to see you struggle going all cross-eyed, looking like you're going to have a seizure, dude, okay? We're going to give you... <laughs> should we give him 20? We'll give you 25 seconds. Okay, I'm going to put it on my stopwatch right now, and you're going to try to find... And this is uh, pre-K pre -K to fourth grade is the, the, you know, the words on this uh, crossword puzzle. So don't think we got him, you know, that real Mavis Beacon beaconator we got him the original dollar store okay dollar general pre-k edition pre-k edition so we're gonna start uh right now you got 25 seconds let's see one two ready go <laughs> hot cross buns hot cross buns da 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 hot cross buns I don't even know the words. Dun, I just know hot dun, cross buns. Dun. And hot cross buns? Why are they doing a crucifix? Well, you know, because they say that's how Lil Nas X got into all these things. And 25 seconds is up. Take that away from him, Hoss. Hand it here, please. 25 seconds up. He actually got 28 seconds. How many words did he get? Two. Two words. What were the words that he got? <laughs> Play, Play ball. ball. 
and, and watch, watch TV. TV. Play Pong. <laughs> watch TV? Well, it only fits because it looks like how I do. that's basically all he does, okay? Next on the talent table, we have a little uh, magnetic uh, writing board. And hey, watch it, okay? That's the last one left because that, that has real lead, okay? <laughs> you can get lead poisoning. You make sure you wash your hands. This one is going to be for the series of questions that host is going to ask you. And some of these questions we've talked about in the podcast, if you paid attention, because he said he took notes, right, host? Yeah, he's 75% of the 75. time. 75. So he should get at least, what score should you get on these questions? I'd say at least 60%. All right. So he shouldn't get 75%. You're saying he should get at least 60%. So you're giving him a little bit of extra room of error, right? Like just a little uh, cautionary. Uh, some pity points, I guess we'd start with. So, mm -hmm. is it working? Cool. So, yes, sir. I'm obviously going to. Some of these are multiple choice, others are not. But, you know, let's start off with one of our most famed figures, our beloved sweetheart, Mavis Beacon. So, what year was the release date of our most cherished Mavis Beacon? Oh, dang. When you're ready, go ahead and show it to me, then show it to the camera. Got to keep things a bit professional here. Okay, go ahead and show the camera. It is okay, 1987 up. is what he wrote. That is the correct year. Well done. He got the correct year? Good yeah, job. It's impressive. 1987. Shout out to Mavis Beacon. Yeah. All the Beaconators. The Beacons of right. Hope that are still living in her shadow. <laughs> Listen, she taught us how to type, and we have him writing on this little magnetic board, <laughs> showing you what a true pioneer she was. And next time, have you hold the answer a little bit longer so we can make sure, you know, it might be the only right answer you get. And, you know, they <laughs> was, aren't even going to know if That's you why I'm right having him show it to me first, just so I can make sure and verify. Uh -huh. But, um, which of these phrases is a common way of saying, I can't take it anymore? A, that's the last stick. B, that's the last leaf. C, that's the last straw. Or D, I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and show the camera. He picked C. He picked C. That's the last straw. That is correct. Although the I am moving to Canada has been a popular one lately. Yep. It really has been. From Wokes. Yeah. Let's go ahead then and ask then. Who is the current president of the United States? Technically, it's still up for grabs, but... <laughs> it's always been a much debated topic on this uh, <laughs> podcast. Okay. Go ahead and show the, the camera. What was that? Joe Biter. I don't know if that's uh that's an N. <laughs> that's an N. <laughs> Joe Biter. I don't know who that guy is. Let's see. The stick uh, moved. Joe Biden. It's so fucking... Joe Biden, we got it. You're fine. Joe Biden. So that's you three. We'll give it to him. Three. Hold on. So far, so good, hubby. Yes. You're doing great, dude. Slightly inebriated is a common definition of which of these words? A milky. B, watery, C, beery, or D, jello shoddy? If you need me to repeat them, you let me know. Yeah, will you repeat that one? A, milky, B, watery, C, beery, D, jello shoddy. Dang, that's a good question. Thank you. Go ahead and show it. He has selected D, jello shoddy. That is the incorrect answer. And that is an Asian lady, you freaking idiot. Yellow shoddy. God, Javi. Yeah, that's Yoko Ono's that was... cousin. Chun Li. Get it right, Javi. It sounded like a, a golden shotgun oh. that Tupac would use, but... <laughs> um, Yellow shoddy. Moving on to the next question. How many ounces in a gallon? How many U.S. ounces are in a U.S. gallon? And this is not a multiple question. This is a multiple ounce, Asabi. Multiple ounces. It could be one ounce. Yep. It very well could be nowadays. Do I get a lifeline here? You can call Cynthia. She'd probably help you. 
But your Let me time, call somebody. you have to time uh, in 30 seconds. Okay. So once a, once a phone call? Yeah, once it call, starts. All right. Or once she picks up, I should say. And if not, you can call Gabe. But that's it. See how much she cares about your career. <laughs> Babe. How many ounces, right? Ounces? In a gallon. Isn't it 64? Uh, I'm trusting you here with my career. 12 <laughs> seconds, 13 Are seconds. Are you sure? 14. Is that your final answer? Wait, do you have like multiple no, answers? No, this is a, a straight answer kind of thing. No gay stuff. N no. No homoerotic stuff here. All right, 30 seconds. Oh, that's come it. On, that was it. Final so answer. That right? is your final answer it looks is. like huh? All right. Okay. I, if okay. not, it's your fault. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Love you. Love you. So 64 ounces 64 in a gallon. 64 ounces in a gallon. Going once. Oh, going twice. Should have gone twice. It's double. It's 128. Damn. Oh. Looks like you guys are still half using a the leader only, system over there. Probably. That's all we buy is those half gallon. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all we buy. Well, hey, I mean, that's where probably she got the 64 from. So three out of five. In what a deck of 20%. <laughs> well. In a deck of cards. And that's, no, it's 60%, by the way. In a deck of cards, which king doesn't have a mustache? Which suit? Do you know what a suit is, Javi? Yeah, like a tie and like Armani or Hugo Boss. what you should have been wearing through your interview. Well, I thought this was a review and uh, yep. there was no expectations set. Oh, no expectations So there's no set? expectations met. About your job? About my interview. You you come to dress to, to the job you want to be. Yeah, and I thought this executive was Executive producer, super right? Super casual. You're coming in looking like an executive producer for the casting Oh, couch. is it Jack? I want to say it's Jack's. In the deck of cards, which king does not have a mustache? Which suit? Oh, which one resembles the Jack Warner? Is it the black one? Hey, Black Lives Matter, you better watch it, dude. I want to say Spade? Man, I don't remember. Shut the camera. He has answered Spades. That is incorrect. It is the Hearts. Oh, uh, really? Hearts. Yes. I could have sworn that one had the, like, the biggest mustache. Because oh, it's red. I thought shapes. it was a ginger. Well, it could have been the spades because... Or not the spades. What's the other one? Diamonds. Diamonds. Because the heart's red. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Another podcast question. What was Huss's first car? A Nissan Sentra. That's A, sorry. A, Nissan Sentra. B, Nissan Pathfinder. C, Nissan Altima. D, Nissan Maxima. If you need the options again, let me know. Yeah, give them to me one more time. A, Sentra. B, Pathfinder. C, Altima. D, Maxima. Dang. Uh... Okay, show the camera. He yes. A. Nissan Sentra. Jose? That is wrong. Sentra is wrong. They didn't have Sentras back then, I don't think so. They had Surus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they had Sentras. <laughs> but it, it was a Maxima. <laughs> He's Puerto Rican. <laughs> I don't know if they had Surus in Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, so, bonus question. If you I get this get right, this. I'll give you two points back. So, so right, right now, you're three for seven. You could be this is like five for eight. Break, yeah. yeah, you could be five for eight. Down to wire. So this is again plus two. What was my cars, my Nissan Maximus, technologically advanced feature? A air conditioning. B anti brake system, ABS. C powered windows, or D anti theft alarm. You said the repeat the question? A A C B, ABS, <laughs> C, powered windows, D, anti-theft alarm. But the question, like, what was it? Oh, sorry. What was my cars, my first cars, 
Technological advance feature. What year was your car? 96. 96? Dang. <laughs> That's the era where it could be like anything. <laughs> you only had one option. <laughs> I know I want to say it didn't have power windows. I don't... You've got 10 seconds. Let's do... Uh... That's total prayer, bro. <laughs> okay. He has selected D, anti-theft alarm. It's probably fun, not it. Fun fact. There was a little bulb at the front that would flash. It did nothing for the alarm. I could break into my car whenever I wanted to. It was actually C, powered windows. Oh, I... I didn't have air conditioning. It was completely broke. It was leather in the middle of the summer. I was always sweaty. Uh, anti-brake system non-existent in that car. I didn't have an anti-theft alarm. It looked like I did, but I didn't. The only thing I really had was powered windows. First on this neighborhood to do it, breaking barriers. <laughs> breaking. breaking bad eventually. Yep. Then I grew my hair back. And I overcame cancer, lung cancer. Stay strong, everyone. Um, that. <laughs> <laughs> switching a bit uh, of gears here. Which of the following older females took advantage of a young host beefy? A, 70-year-old disabled security guard. B, a seed-seeking Latina. C, a cougar with high mileage. You know what that means. B, or excuse me, D, bearded middle school lunch lady. Or E, all the above. Dang. A, 70-year-old e really security guard. B, is a seed-seeking Latina. C, a cougar with high mileage. D, the bearded middle school lunch lady. Or E, all the above. <laughs> I don't remember a bearded lunch lady, bro. Well, you gotta remember where the beard was, first of all, okay? Obviously, it was on the face, hobby. Where I don't know that. The waist. I, have no, I have no recollection of that. Well, there's two lips down there. There was a bush, a.k.a. the beard. I mean, it could be E. The James Harden of lunch is what you tell me. <laughs> Always traveling with that step back. <laughs> splash. I don't think James Harden was in the league back then, but and it was a different kind of splash. Oh. Uh, and I was sending it from deep too, just saying. <laughs> Alright, with that information, I'm going with uh E. E, all the above all get the selected. Above. Plus beefy weigh in on this. And that is correct. That is Dang. correct. <laughs> that is correct. Woo. Well done. Yeah, you can drink water. <laughs> yeah. you know? If you need a break, feel <laughs> free. He drank most of his water in the first question, and now he hasn't taken a sip, dude. Uh, let's get into one of my favorite subjects, history. All right? What was Helen Keller's first word? A, water. B, mama. C, hello. Or D, crikey. It's gotta be D. Which one was Mama? B. B. Mama. I'm wondering. If... <laughs> I'm Mama. wondering. If... <laughs> she was probably in the Migos, bro. So... <laughs> Shit. You got that stir fry, huh? <laughs> Mama. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that one. I'm sorry, Mama. <laughs> he has picked B. Mama. Host Beefy. And as me, as a. Uh... Helen Keller, uh, seeker, you know, well, technically she was, she would be seeking me, uh, just like an enthusiast. Second, the Mavis Beacon, your answer is absolutely wrong, Javi. It was actually a water. water. You can Google it. It was water. Water. Yep. <laughs> they held her hands to the water and they, they spelled it out in sign language. And then she said water. And after that, she could read. It was that holy water, Just I guess. like that, yeah. <laughs> Back to Catholicism. Take me to church on a Saturday night. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a we we know that on this podcast you have a bit of a difficult time spelling words, so we have three words that we're gonna have you spell, of course, with no assistance from your phone. Um, and take it one at a time because you're you're bored. I don't know how good you can write. 
Yeah, but so we'll we'll just do one at a time. Handwriting's trash. First, let's start off with a pet peeve of yours, charcuterie. Oh man. You won't have to show the camera. I'll just read it out loud. Yeah, this sucks. Let have him show the camera so they can see what he's spelling. <laughs> And spell it in English, shall we? None of that Arabic stuff, okay? Amen. <laughs> what are you drawing or actually writing? in uh, Arabic. Yeah, I'm not going to let that slide. <laughs> well, spell it in English letters. But it's French. He had just a bunch of J's and I's in there. Called it Hebrew. How dare you? It was an N. The first one was an N. I think Moses delivered them just so you could be <laughs> mocking them. He didn't. Did he deliver them? Moses delivered them. Yeah. The Jews. Them. They. Arabics or Jews? The Jews. They speak Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, I was writing in Arabic. No, you weren't. <laughs> I can't remember. Just give it your your because I mean we're waiting right now, Javi, and I mean true people are falling asleep, so you're sitting there charcuting around. Dude, this they just, just read it out paper. loud. Then read it out loud, and I'll match it. Okay. S H A R K C O O T Y. Charcuterie? <laughs> Charcuterie, huh? I mean, you, we know we don't have to check that. That's wrong. That's girl sharks that are afraid of that when they're younger girl sharks and they want, could, they want to get the charcuteries of from, the, from the boy sharks. Then they have charcuteries, dude. You know what the funny I thing is? I watched the movie char er, Charcuteries. <laughs> I watched the movie Cooties yesterday, dude. That's all I can think I of. I going to say you watched Sharknado. But, I mean, Sharknado's a good movie. So this is the 11th question, but I w I'm actually going to count all these as separate uh, points. Points. So you still have a chance to come out top plus two out of this one. All right, spell leprechaun. Oh shit! Need to remember WWE for this one. Damn it, dude! You can spell it on here too if you want. On this one, shout out to all the lepers out there. Do you have any extra pens and, uh, over there? Oh, we can give them a pen. Oh, right, here, a pen right here from the cup. The pen is cup. Here we from go. Cup of youth. The pen is cup. Leprechaun is the word, okay? We don't make fun of people with that and just say it. Go ahead and spell it. Uh, shit. Uh, L-E-P-E-R-C-H-A-U-N. Can you flash it really quick, Javi? Flash. You flash spelled words. it L-E-P-E-R-C-H-A-U-N? <laughs> yeah. You should have swapped the letter R and the E. It's L-E-P-R-E. C H A U N. Yeah, he didn't have really? a skin condition, okay? He was just short, you freaking jackass. Yeah, Jesus didn't come save him, and the one came back and <laughs> yeah. thanked him. He didn't right? tell him to go wash himself in the Jordan River. They couldn't spell either. Their hands weren't working. They were lepers, no. okay? True, they were probably missing fingers yeah. and shit. Last word to come out even androgynous. Armageddon. <laughs> Aerosmith. That's all. I just <laughs> hear that song playing. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, here we go. Okay, go ahead and spell it. A-N-D-R-O-G-E-N-O-U-S. Oh. Close. Instead of an E, it's a Y. Androgynous. Androgynous. Yep. Androgynous. Damn it. G-Y-N. So My you're 4 for 11 now. It's not looking good for you. What was my other question we were going to ask? Oh, yeah. The summary. No, well, we still have one before the summary. Oh, the the great. oral exam. So, what's the most... Sorry if I interrupt you, Javi. You do have your uh, fireman hat there for good luck. I did place it there for you at your disposal. Maybe if you could get a little bit of uh, good luck. Go ahead and wear it. Who knows? I mean, it's up to you. Do what you need to. 
You look Let's like a go. burlesque show in Chicago. Just without... I prefer Miami, but you know, okay. There's more kids there. True. What's the most classified item? The All Spark, Mr. Potato Head, Hunter Biden's laptop, or the Elder Wand? The most what? Classified item. Most classified, as in like top secret. Yep. Man. Can you repeat? Can you repeat the uh, options again, host? Yes, and you're gonna have to explain why it's classified. The most classified, the All Spark, which comes from Transformers. It's what's give them life. Mister Potato Head, super rare commodity now, is canceled. So I mean, we still he still lives in our hearts and in this room. Two of them. Hunter Biden's laptop. That is our current maybe president, Joe Biden, his son. Confiscated laptop has a lot of naughty things on there, or the Elder Wand, which is from Harry Potter, the the best wand of all wands. Yeah, and you're saying that I have to just explain why. Yeah, I'm going with Mr. Potato Head because it's real. It's here. We have two of them out of I don't know how many in the world. Um, the wand I'm sure you could buy at Universal Studio. All spark. Does it really spark all? You know. And then um, the laptop is a myth. It hasn't been found. Okay. Um, I feel like if it was a thing, Hunter Biden would be in jail. So. Okay. What are your thoughts? Plus, beef, beef. Well, I would say Mr. Potato Head too. Okay. I was going to stick to Hunter Biden's laptop. But next thing you know, uh, Giuliani is the one yeah, who has Giuliani, the laptop. Yeah, it's actually Giuliani. And then they, you know what I mean? They said he. They He's said the one he, going to jail. He he put it as an Amazon Prime gift. You know that freaking idiot. They trace it back to him. Now the FBI is at his house. You know. It's true, and we can't reverse those conspiracies. I'm in agreement. So five out of eleven for sure. Mr. Potato Head is the most classified item. Um, yeah. So. And he's the one that's actually been canceled. Yep. True. You know what I mean? Yep. The all spark still out all, there. Yes. All you spark know? is still the thing wand out there. still out there. Yep. Yeah. I don't Let's know if you've seen the other wand. Really, it's just a glorified anal beads. Um, you can Google the other wand. You're just gonna be like, yeah, those are anal beads. You. I don't want to Google it. What if Jose's elder wand comes up? You know, I think that's one of his. Uh, that's only one fans. of my tricks. Yeah. It has that p nice patina. That nice my like vesicular. That nice sheen. Tint, shine, yeah. You know. That stain. That wood grain stain. So yep. Call me the Mexican Charlie Sheen, baby. That sateen. <laughs> nice settled in and everything. <laughs> Last uh, portion of this entire interview. And this is really just you expressing. And how well you express it, I'm, I'm willing to give you more than just one point, right? Because um, right now he can break even, right? Yeah, he could break even. Right now he's 5 out of 11, which is close. And depending on how well detailed his response is... Um, we can give him a boost in points. The year is now, and you have the most famous orphans vying to get adopted. By okay. none I'm going to interrupt you really quick. Yes. Because I just want to make sure you don't take this opportunity for granted, Javi. Okay? Because this the last time we gave you an opportunity like this to come up big, Mr. Big Shot, Chauncey Billups. Okay? Bill Cartwright. Yep. We gave you a chance to get a puppy. Okay? Live on air. And you fell a little bit short. Okay? Squandered. So I'm letting you know right now, think of how bad you felt when when you got denied the puppy that time, okay? Because your argument was weak, you were very selfish with your points, and you lost out on the puppy. Now Jose is going to give you a chance to possibly keep your job with great benefits, great pay, a lot of uh, teaching and development. So just make sure you listen to his question and digest it, and then we expect a really good articulated answer on your behalf. Got um, it. I 100% echo all that, and on top of it, in the event you fall short and squander it yet again, a puppy may die. So let's go ahead and, and get into this. So again, the year is now. We're in the present moment. And you have the most famous orphans of all time vying to get adopted by none other than Queen Beyonce and Jay-Z Hova, the god. Who gets adopted and why? These are your following orphans. Stuart Little. Orphan Annie. Oliver Twist. Harry Potter. And Voldemort. Remember, they're getting 
adopted by Beyonce and Jay-Z. And I want to know who gets adopted and why. Why would Jay-Z and Beyonce pick one of these five? Why? I'm going to make my argument for all of them. So Stuart Little, no, you because pick it's... one. Well, I know. Okay. But I'm just going gotcha. to make my argument. And You're going to think out loud? Yeah, I'm going to think out okay. loud. No emotion I like for me. that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> this is good. This is good. So Stuart Little has a chance because he is very unique. You know, there's nothing quite like him around. He's a talking animal. And while well, he's still alive, I feel. Annie, because she's a woman or a girl, has a pretty decent shot as well. Because uh, gender neutral and whatnot. And who doesn't want to have a little girl to raise up and probably blue ivy carter needs a, another sister because i don't know about the twins i've never looked into them too deep oliver twist for me it's a no-go because he's british he doesn't he's not american what the <laughs> hell would he be doing in america you know okay um harry potter as well like he has a chance because he's magic and he can probably make up his own social security number on the spot. And he can make up his own social security number. Yeah, he's he's it's the benefit I didn't think of. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Double and I mean Voldemort probably has the same chance, but he's evil. Oh, I mean, but I guess they can all be in the Illuminati together. You know what I mean? <laughs> being Jay being in the Illuminati. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Voldemort because he make up his own passport, his own social security, Illuminati, all that. <laughs> you know, we've talked about Illuminati on the podcast before. I was a little scared back then, but I don't value my life anymore. So like, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna, you know. <laughs> You don't value your life, but you're I trying don't. to take this question serious. Hmm. <laughs> so I am gonna go with Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah. So again, because he's in the Illuminati, he can fabricate his own passport. Yeah, any type of documentation he really needs. Okay, what else? Um <laughs> He's looking what at else? that thing like he took like, I took notes. <laughs> you know? You can't even reach that. <laughs> no, <laughs> He's a wizard of words, a maybe. Wizard, yeah, I'm trying he to can like match, you know, Jay Z without a pen, right? Yep. Um, that too. He probably can write for Hove, and no one would ever know. In parcel tongue, some parcel tongue bars when you play backwards. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's your boy. A whole bunch of double <laughs> entendres with that tongue, you know. <laughs> Okay, so all right, um, that, those, I think those are three valid. Solid. And what he's you? a great businessman. You guys forget obviously that about, uh, Voldemort, right? He's got the what's that other guy? The uh, Malfoy's dad, Lucius working, Malfoy. Yeah, he's, yeah, got, he's got the working Malfoy's for working for him. You know, billionaires. Dude, he got, he's got money. He, he gets he species like, behind him, like the giants, uh, the Death Eaters, so the Inferi is what they call the them. The Dementors. They're, they're zombies. Yeah. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of goons. Jay needs goons. He's got go gay Jay's got goons. Valdi's got goons. Yeah, it's like a like a a little mafia that they can start. Yeah, I mean, it's only good business. Voldemort starts with a V. Hova has a V in it. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, you know, host beefy. What do you give him on that? You know what? He did make the point uh, of Voldemort also being Illuminati. He's a snake. He's a Freemason. Yep. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I would have also... And really, you could make the argument that he is part Harry, as in Harry Potter. Well, he's actually... He doesn't have any hair. Voldemort doesn't have yes, any hair. Yes, in that... And that's another... That's a double entendre, right? Because Harry and Harry means two things. So... So, yeah, I mean, before you interrupted me... Sorry. Uh, right? Because didn't you ask me a question, Hoss? I did. I well, said, what are your thoughts on that score? What would I, you give him? Well, so probably I wasn't, I was going to say, you know what? You did great. I was going to tell him why, but then he rudely interrupted me. And then I'm just trying to add now, more points. Now I'm kind of leaning towards Stuart Little a little bit. You know, he did make a great point. Oliver Twist is British. Okay. And he's a British kid that just wants porridge. Yeah, he's just asking for more. You know what I mean? Can you just imagine? He just, I mean, I'm just saying the black the greed, community, first you know? of all, they would be going crazy because they're like, why the heck did they, you know, get this British boy? Yeah. Oliver Twist. You know what I mean? And then you get a mouse 
you know, Antifa, it's, you know, uh, the uh, Latinx community going crazy as well if they get Harry Potter. You know what I mean? What? Oh, this guy, you think he can uh, ride a broom better than us? Latinx community? Hell no. So I was going to go with Voldemort too. So I'm going to give him. Uh, how many extra points would I give him? I don't know if I would give him it's any. It's up to you. I don't know if I would give him any extra points. I would say I was 77% pleased with that answered. And then take that as uh, you may want, Hoss. Okay. Let me just write some notes down. 77% satisfied. You know, um, I agree. Stuart Little is unique. He has this talking ability, but Jay doesn't mess with rats, right? He doesn't mess with rats. He doesn't like rats. He Where he's from? Yeah, he did no snitches. That's he was he didn't. He was in the Marcy projects. He's seen enough rats uh, in his lifetime. He would have adopted Takashi Six Nine. He doesn't yeah, he, have a dad. Yeah, and they're both from Brooklyn, so yeah. Um, the whole Annie has a vag, as you mentioned, not me. That was Javi's words. Uh, the whole equality thing. Ivy needs, you know, Ivy, I believe, ha Blue Ivy has a sister or a couple, from what I understand. Jay-Z doesn't need that kind of press, right? He's already accepted in that kind of community, from my understanding. He supports Queen B, and Queen B supports him. He's got the best kind of uh, props and support. He doesn't need that press, and he's off the table. Oliver Twist, I agree. He's just a hungry British boy. He's like, come on. You are an illegal immigrant with no documents, and you're going to leech off of my welfare. Go back to Britain or whatever my you're from. My taxes, yeah. Yeah. Um, 20, 21. Harry Potter, you did mention he can fabricate social security numbers. Oh, so he would be great. You can make a lot of money laundering. Yep. With Harry Potter. Uh, Harry Potter doesn't care about his hair, so Jay-Z could save some money without haircuts. Um, but Valdi does stand out. I mean, he is Snake. We talked about the Freemasons. Willing to um, take chances. He's he willing to take chances. He He'll does do whatever it takes for business. He takes the hard choices. There's money over everything. Kind of like that YMCMB. And again, we talked about Freemason. He doesn't have to worry about him going to jail if he's under Jay as a goon. Because, you know, if he was... Like, what happens if a rapper's named Mason and they're like Freemason? People are just going to think they're talking about like a cult. So if you're a rapper or soon to be rapper, don't call yourself Mason. Um, I did like the thought process that Javi decided to think out loud and really hash things out. Um, I honestly was kind of impressed with the way he articulated and thought the process out. I'm going to say I'm 85% satisfied with his uh, his evaluation. So for me, I want to give him... Is that a point and a half collectively between the two of you? I was thinking two points, but what, what about you, Host B3? Yeah, because 80, 80 uh, what did he give? 85 plus 77? We carry the one over here still, you know, it's a two point. What, what is it? You're going to be like uh firehouse subs and round that up. <laughs> <laughs> I already pay taxes firehouse sub. Fuck you. I support autism. So we'll round it at two points. Okay. Two points. So seven out of 11, seven, 11, seven, so, 11. Look at that. It's a destined to be. It sounds like it is. You essentially reached your uh, 60% uh, margin. Nice. Look at that. You keep your job. For another year until next nice. year's annual review. Very Maybe nice. we do see a puppy in the future. Cynthia, write us and let us know. Don't talk to him about it. Just send us an email. <laughs> send my lawyers. How do you feel about after that annual review? I feel like I did okay, you know. Obviously, in another year, more growth. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're welcome for your extra chances. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, and our I, generosity. We were, you know, I am a little mad you didn't come prepared dressed. I thought you were going to show a little bit of respect to the podcast, to your, you know, oh, I have to tell you. Now, you know, like, oh, I have, you, you have to tell me my dress code. It's this annual review. You only get one of these. Okay, now maybe we have to do it more because that, that's one thing. Maybe we should dock a couple points. Also, it's because it's he comes entitlement. in your dress. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but dress you, however the hell he wants, dude. You're not what is this? Viva La Bam? I don't think so, honey. This is, uh, you kind of did start off lying too. I take notes uh seventy-five percent of the time. I'm not gonna really? say hey, I'm you know there's literally like <laughs> four little pages of his notes on here as evidence. They are not and counting how many the podcast other four. episodes do we have. There's not counting the other four that are on the computer. 
See, not that's so not there's math. eight a total of eight out of 36. That's not good math. That's what isn't that 60 percent? No, it's not, <laughs> not even close. Nope. So, yeah, that was you know, I we dressed up to the occasion, dude. I hate uh, getting dressed corporate, host even hates it even more. You showed us a lack of respect, and we showed you nothing but the mo utmost respect. We dressed up for you. We said, oh, this guy, he's been working hard for us. This hurts. You know, he's been... Uh, oh, man, you guys are lucky. I sitting here and clicking and uh, the buttons that I clicked this whole time. He deserves me dressing up and being uncomfortably warm, uh, you know, in the 80 degree, degree, degree weather. Now I can't even, you know, speak because I'm so pissed. But guess what? And then he comes in showing, oh, what's up, guys? Then he has the audacity to claim that many of these uh, segments have been his idea. Then when I challenge him, like, oh, yeah, really? Most of them haven't? Yeah, some of them. Yeah, which ones? I can't even remember. Possible deniability. And then did he bring <laughs> us anything? I thought he would have sweetened us up a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I was giving him mints. Hey, Javi, the big day, the big day, you know? I thought he was going to bring uh, Costa Vida, you know, or maybe he was going to bring Jamba Juice. Remember when he brought Jamba Juice one day? Dude, that was a good day. Wasn't that nice? That was probably one of the best podcasts, too. He brought us Jamba Juice. One time he... uh brought us some of those french things beignets yep and then one time he brought us uh what else did it bring us he brought us mcdonald's once brought us mcdonald's once and then today he comes in like mr mcmahon you know Digging no the joint. people are injured left no and right he doesn't care no insurance no thank you card oh no dude that would have been a nice gesture you know yeah Thank you. This is what I've learned so far in the podcast, host. And I say, you know, I that would be my exit interview. I I appreciate. No, that's not going to be your exit interview because, <laughs> because right now we're uh, an hour in, so we're going to knock it off with wholesome advice, and you're going to give us uh, the advice of uh, now that you we've concluded this um, meeting. Seven out of eleven, still pretty low. We give you bonus points. So now that we concluded this meeting, you're going to. Uh, tell us why you know this job is important to you why you appreciate the job uh what else could could he talk about hoss uh maybe how to have some emotional intelligence and tone back his sense of entitlement yep how to not be you know he always talks about oh this gen c they're so entitled you know what i mean I always trash them all the these bernie so you know all these bernie supporters you know aocs you know, and DOCs. And then he comes in, you know, look at him, dude. Like a power puff girl today. And he's unbelievable. So <laughs> why don't you give us some wholesome advice in the workplace, Avi, of what it takes to be, uh, you know, an employee of uh, your shortcomings, your, your pains, your growth and development and your journey that you've had so far. And this question I kind of asked you last time. So I hope you uh, thought it out a little bit and take us through your journey of what you've learned so far in the podcast. Oh, I mean, I've learned that it's not what you have, but what you make of what you with what you have. And um, are you saying our technology sucks? Yes, we definitely need upgrades. This is uh, post review mm -hmm. um, things that we could update, you know, I hear this from an Apple user. Continue. Yes. Um, the background, I feel like we need to update the background. OK. <laughs> Um, we did, Jose did upgrade, uh, these chairs and tables, which are super nice. I really like them a lot. They're actually way comfortable than that chair over there <laughs> that I always sit in. Wow. He's, this I is my entire chair, actually. He was, he was on the first ergonomic chair while me and Jose had to sit on the casting couch that was full of sin. Yeah. We basically sat on freaking dry semen, semen all the time. <laughs> yes. Huh? And then you take, you take this chair for granted, this ergonomic chair for, for your posture. You're coming in looking like freaking Quasimodo. All hunched over, dude. Now Cynthia thanked me the other day. She's like, "Oh, Javi's posture has gotten so great since he uh, joined the podcast." Yeah, you I can't even notice his scoliosis anymore. You know those Victoria's Secret pants that have pink written on the back of their butts? I just have a white strip of semen on mine, and people are like, "Damn, bro, where you get them pants at?" It was an exclusive player. Look at look at my posture right now that I'm in the ergonomic chair. Normally, I'm slouched when I'm with Jose. You know, they're like, "Oh, Jose, you're like two feet tall." No, I'm just bad posture because I'm no, on the it's, casting it's couch. because he's relaxed, you know. And now look right here. Because he's on the casting couch. They have oh, to make you feel comfortable. Posture. Right here, look at my posture. My chest is sticking out. You have British posture? I'm looking, be I'm looking beefy. Look, look at those muscles. Looking like a Mexican yogi over there. Huh? 
Yo, a doll team from Street Fighter. Yeah, I want to mess somebody up, dude. Fire from uh, what is it? Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. That wasn't the question we asked you. So now you're trying to divert, you know, whatever we're throwing at you. Now you're trying to go another way. So keep uh, keep going with your answer, Javi, that you were telling us about the wonderful things and all the shortcomings Maybe we could that we failed add, you. Um, uh, help me with my spelling. You know, there's no development. No development. I only get made wholesome. <laughs> you're <laughs> asking for. You're begging for things. Hey, did we not get him? Did we not get him a word search? <laughs> wholesome advice. He's literally asking for shit. Did we not get him a word search host? Yeah, it'll help with his spelling. Now, if you guys can see my background, Hobby's background, look at the new background he's got over here for summer, being ready for summer. And and he's uh, saying that we don't get him uh, backgrounds or anything. Look at this nice new background. Kiwis, <laughs> pineapples, <laughs> watermelon. Huh? He's got a couple so Maka so Kaleki so Leki. Yep. Oh, you can't say that anymore. And then look, can. see? I mean, this is all decked out over here. Wasn't it canceled because it was? Yep. Oh, don't, hey, don't be... try to get on my good side, okay? Well, I'm not getting on anybody. We good haven't side. spent any money on the budget for me and host wall over there because we spend it all in your wall. You, for your review, look how ready we were for your review. We dressed up. We made you a nice little thing. It looks like we're praying to a freaking Mexican god over here, okay? Santa Tino, Morte. Tino and then meanwhile, land. me and host over there. The coolest thing we have is uh, Miss Sirvetkovic over there on the. Uh, Right there. The nicest thing that we had. La mamá de los pollitos. <laughs> huh? La yep. potra. La caballo. <laughs> and, and then he's he's crashing our uh, our background. Can you believe that, host? I, I this, don't know. This is I, the only guy that got a new background, dude. Okay? Yeah, dude. He, he has the balls on this guy. He has an annual review, and he fl he turns to the... We're done with it. And he goes, yeah, <laughs> you guys need to fix this. You need to fix that. You need to fix this. He's got the, the only actual chair. You know what I mean? He's got. Look at his background, dude. I mean, I'm over here. I might just stay over here. Look at this, dude. You know? <laughs> it's but, like the most eclectic background. <laughs> and he's like, y'all ain't doing shit for me. You know? This is nice over here. That's all. I, over where you guys are sitting. I don't know those slumps over there, wherever you guys are at over there. Slum city. You it's know? not bad being poor. You got the talent table. Yeah, we, we, we debuted at the talent table today, Javi. Got you a freaking uh, limited edition harmonica that you couldn't even blow on. A flute. I just look at blowing. And, uh, but yeah, keep going with your thing before I keep getting mad. I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> Let's see. Here's my list. Your list of wants? Um, this is supposed to be wholesome <laughs> advice. We didn't ask for a want list. This isn't Christmas. All right. My wholesome advice is I'm going to learn from my mistake. And you only apologize. made one mistake? Only you only made one my, mistake. My only one mistake that I've made right. throughout my whole podcast career is uh this quick rant that I did asking for stuff. I should be more grateful. And I think I'll end it with that before we run out of time. Oh, we have plenty of time, dude. That was, none of that was actually wholesome. It was just comments and promises that were empty, but just like Joe Biden. <laughs> Host updated the computer. We can record for six days in a row. Yeah. And then you're crushing that while people are listening to the podcast, Avi. <laughs> you got to take into account the sounds you make. Dude, oh, you got a lot to learn. We, dude, need we to, should dock some points. Dude. We need to make a standard of work for this guy. Unbelievable, yeah. dude. Set expectations. Uh, so, <laughs> dude, I don't even know how. What You know what? Now I'm a little bit. You know, I feel a little bit sad in the house. Why, why don't you give us some wholesome advice? Maybe lighten up my day now that this guy. <laughs> we gave him an extra bonus points, you know? And then he just shits on us like that. So, uh, a homeboy, the entitled boy with the uh, wish list that a Christmas kid would be jealous of, drank some water. Right within the USA. first question, USA. we are fast approaching summertime. It gets hot everywhere in the U.S. Make sure you are drinking plenty of clear fluids, preferably water, not vodka. Stay hydrated, stay safe, um, and go ahead and down. Wash down beans and rice. Literally, you know, complete protein, delicious, as long as you season it right, with just a glass of water. And I think you're going to have a good summer doing that. And how many ounces uh, should they be drinking, Javi? Hope you learned that today. Uh, at least 16. Yeah, two cups. <laughs> two cups of water a day. You called Cynthia and it was double what she said. Yeah, I mean, at least two cups. Drink when you're thirsty. When your body tells you you need it. Unbelievable. Listen to your body. All right, guys. My wholesome <laughs> advice is uh, it's Asian History Month. Maybe I'm going to get uh, an Asian person in here from the Asian community. So we can 
talk to an Asian to see what it's like to talk to an Asian American. Are you done? Or are you finished? Continue. Okay, so I was going to say support the Asian community. I went this weekend. I went to Asian-owned restaurants only. I went to Fat 33. And there, was, there wasn't there was 33 Asians there, but there was maybe four of them. Maybe. One of them, he couldn't talk. And then I went to Top It over here. And uh, also Asian-owned. So it's Asian History Month. So hopefully you guys are supporting Asians and not laughing you know, about the Asian community like Javi did just now. But, you know, there's uh, a lot of things that people don't know about the Asian community. And- did you go on a date with an Asian? Stop it. There's a lot of things that people don't know about the Asian community, you know, because people are people. And I talked about this, I think, last week that um, Asians are, I mean, they've probably been here longer than me. You know what I mean? In the in the U.S. But like Mexicans are like, oh, Mexican-Americans, you know, already like first generation. But Asians, they're just always Asian. They're never even American, even if they they don't even know how to speak Asian anymore. So just, you know, be a little bit more grateful, Javi. But uh, hopefully you guys, uh, some people are voting not to give you a drop. And uh, I don't know, you know, but this is Hoss Beefy. I love you guys. This is Hoss. And this is the ungrateful Javi. All right. Damn straight. Subscribe, like, share. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Oh, yes. On love Proposition 27. Biden 2020.